Jay. Yes. Welcome to Interfaith Spiritual Center. We are not here by chance. We are here by divine appointment. And all of you tuning in to this broadcast, it's because of this community that we can put this message out into the world, this transformative message out into the world. And that's why I love our way of life, is that you give a man bread, you feed him for a day. You teach him how to plant, you feed him for a lifetime that we are planting the seeds in consciousness that allow us to go forth into life with beauty and expression, aliveness, profound energy, and the ability to make a difference wherever we go. These principles are universal principles. We are always using these universal laws, whether we are aware of it or not. So the theme for creating a new matrix for 2012 is to make that shift and to create our lives being spiritually grounded. And when we are spiritually grounded, we can open our consciousness and we can begin to experience life at a whole new level. And when we get this, we never go back to the way that it was because it's half past six on the evolutionary clock. And when it is half past six on the evolutionary clock, that pull to God is involuntary. Whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on it. My topic today is Aladdin's Lamp. It is based on a book that Mark Victor Hansen, who used to speak for me in my San Diego uh, center, uh, he wrote this, The Aladdin Factor, with Jack Canfield. And this is a classic. It's about, you know, 20 years old, but it is an absolute classic, as many wonderful books are. I always feel that many, art, many authors and artists, that's like their, their beginning work is just spectacular, and this is one of those. And you may not know it, but Jack Canfield was a teacher. And it was interesting because my husband uh, taught fifth grade, English as a second language, and a Title I. Uh, disadvantaged area school in Pacoima. And Jack Canfield, and this was my late husband, Neil Stroud, and Jack Canfield came to speak to the teachers, to speak about self-esteem, about empowering the students. And he told a very interesting story. And the story was about this new teacher. She came in and she took over a class. And the former teacher, uh, there was some illness and they had to take a leave of absence. So she was going through all of the paperwork of the students, and she saw, you know, 150, she saw 140, she saw 110, all, it was amazing to her, all of the IQs were over 100, and she was just so blessed, she felt so wonderful about this. And so the students just excelled in everything they did, and she just honored them, and she praised them, because if you praise, you take the pee off, what do you do? You raise the vibration, the energy, the frequency. And she was just so grateful. And at the end of the term, the principal came in and said, I cannot imagine what you did with these students. They have never performed like this. They are just the top of the school. That's amazing. She said, well, why is that amazing? I just looked at their paperwork. I saw their IQs, 150, 140, 110. She said, why is that amazing? He said. Those, that's not IQ, those are locker numbers. <laughs> Thank you. So isn't it amazing? She didn't know that. So she treated them all as geniuses, and guess what? They responded as geniuses. So the Aladdin factor that we're talking about is energetically, we ask for what we want. Jesus, who became the Christ, said, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Because they who ask, receive. They who seek, find. And they who knock at the door, it is opened for them. So if we do not ASK, guess what? We do not G-E-T. We've got to ask for what we want. The universe is all ears. And how many of us are putting those requests out in a negative way? I am, using the sacred I am sick, I am poor, I am broke, I am this, I am that. To me, that's blasphemy. 
because the sacred I am has said, you are created in the image and likeness of God, that it is good. And guess what? Very good. Very good. That is our birthright. That is the original blessing that we have been given. So, you know, the story of Aladdin is wonderful. He's walking along, you know, the beach. He sees a little lamp. You know, he thinks it's kind of nice. He picks it up, right? And he's kind of fiddling with it and playing with it. And all of a sudden, he rubs it a little bit because it's tarnished. And out comes this what, genie? And he, the genie says, your wish is my command. So we teach in the science of mind, in the science of mastery classes, that trained thought is far more powerful than untrained thought. So he's walking around and he's, you know, kind of polishing at this great, amazing genie of the universe comes forth, your wish is my command. Now, I love the little story, and you've heard it, but I love it. It bears repeating about the guy that went to the psychic. And uh, she's got a sign out there, and as he starts to, he goes into the little, you know, the draped room and the great crystal ball, and he sees $150 for three questions. And he said, oh my gosh, that's a lot, isn't it? She said, yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my crazy humor. Um, so we have to be very clear on what it is that we are asking for. So when we, I believe that clarity is power. So, you know, the whole story is about he was, you know, it was just all fate and happenstance. But once he got clear that he could rub the magic lamp and energetically all of the mastery of the universe comes forward. Your wish is my command. And when we get it, what we put out into the universal intelligence, and that universal intelligence with its great big ears is listening, be still and know that I am God. And as we begin to put it out in such a way that we acknowledge it's what I want. Because so many people, you know, the, the people don't ask for various reasons, and I have, uh, I have what I send out every Saturday, an outline of what I'm going to talk about. And one of the biggest things is ignorance. People don't know what they want. They're not clear about what they want. So their lives are operated on default. It's kind of like whatever I get. But when we set our intentions, here it is New Year's Day. Last night I made my gratitude list. I went over the energy of what I am so grateful for in 2011. And some of my greatest challenges were some of my greatest gifts. That if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you say to this experience, this obstacle, this situation in your life, remove, hence it does. Because with God, all things are possible. And I give out mustard seeds. I have a little jewel jars and I bought them in bulk from India, and I put a mustard seed in it, and many of you have received them. And people open this little jewel jar, and they go, there's nothing in it. I said, look again. And they look again, they, well, there's some sort of little seed. And I said, all the power in the universe is in that seed to move mountains, to move obstacles, to move everything out of the way so that you can experience life at the very highest level. If you only have that much faith, naked to the visible eye, you have to really focus to see it. If you have that much faith, nothing is impossible unto you. And to believe it and to know it, and that when we have stuff come up in our body temple, we have a ministry of prayer and we turn things over to the ministry of prayer because when we are subjectively involved, we're rubbing Aladdin's lap, but we're, you know, we're kind of half-hearted about it because we're not experiencing our 100%. So we turn it over. And as we turn it over to the universe, that universal voice says what? Your wish is my command. And when we believe that, when we open ourselves up to that, the whole universe is there for us. I have seen miracle after miracle after miracle. I have seen broken relationships suddenly healed. 
I have seen people that have lost everything recreated in the twinkling of an eye. I have seen so much through this way of life. I mean organ transplants and all of that that have worked because they had the faith as a grain of mustard seed and rubbed the lamp with intention so that when the energy of the universe said, your wish is my command, with clarity spoke their word into the law of mind and that word received it and gave it back again. I know at the deepest level that this works or I would not be doing this for 36 years. I've seen it transform my own life. And I want you to know that not everyone goes and makes the journey with us. And that's one of the things that we have to realize. So being clear about what we want and feeling worthy of what we want. Sometimes we're afraid to ask for what we want. Pride gets in the way. They'll think I'm weak. They think, you know, won't think I'm strong. The fear of rejection is the greatest of why we don't ASK to G-E-T. That fear of rejection that they'll turn me down. I want you to know that I got this new phone, this Android phone, and I, I was doing texting, but I didn't know exactly how to do certain things. So I went up to AT&T. I did not realize they were closing early, uh, just because it's, you know, it's New Year's Eve. I mean, they want to go out and party, I guess. So they, I'm knocking at the door, and they said, we're closed. And I went, one question. <laughs> and they go, we're closed. I said, one question. They said, we're closed. I said, I'm going to stand here. <laughs> and I did. And then I waved. and. Finally, he was doing stuff, doing stuff, and finally he got to the front door. And you know how there's that little crack in the door, the glass doors? We're speaking through the crack in the door. It's the crack in the cosmic door. And we are speaking through it. And I said, you know, I'm sharing my question. And he goes, well, you just, you know, touch that. And I touched it. And he goes, then, then touch that. And I touched it. And I go, oh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. You are so wonderful. Thank you. And I said, I have this little angel, and I kind of, you know, put it through the door like you received today, little angel. I said, you are my angel. Thank you so much. He said, oh, if I'd known this, I'd have opened the door. <laughs> I was not going to give up. And just stood there, and just knowing that the universe was going to, if I don't ASK, even if it's five minutes after you close, I will stand here. And they actually had somebody in there that was buying something but had locked the doors. And I didn't know they were closing two hours early because I went online to see when they closed. <laughs> so when we are clear about what it is, the information that we need, and the worthiness of knowing that we deserve the answers to our questions, and that we deserve, as we put into the law of mind, our highest vision, our deepest desire, our most sacred goal, as we put that into the law of mind, it returns because with God, all things are possible. Whatever we choose to call our higher power, that this universe intelligence is always listening, be still and know. And through this knowingness, that as we open the space to allow God to do what God does best, then we are on the path and we are creating community. This is how we grow. That there is a group dynamic. The whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts and a greater synergistic mind of God arises in a group consciousness, in community. So all of you who are here on New Year's Day, the year of our Lord, 2012, 2012, I acknowledge each and every one of us that we heard the call, we answered. And that voice is ever present, before they call, I will answer, and while they're yet speaking, I will hear. I believe that. I've had the experience of that. And as we open ourselves up today to really go to that next level, it's about doing it consciously. It's about realizing Aladdin's lamp is within us, that as we go within to the secret place of the Most High, we are rewarded openly by the outward demonstrations of our lives. This is how this way of life works. And as we put the works with the faith, we get the demonstration. But faith without works is dead. It's totally dead. So we have to know this day in whom we live and move and have our being. It's God. You are as close to God as I am ever going to get. 
I am as close to God as you are ever going to get. And if I am in that place in me, and you are in that place in you, there truly is only one of us. I went to get candles yesterday after uh, we had lunch, and I, I was, got a lot of candles at the alley, and a, a young man of color said, wow, you got a lot of candles there, that's a lot of light. And, I, and so we got into a conversation, and I said, well, you know, I consider my home an altar, and I'm, I do light candles every day, and, and it's really wonderful. And I said, where are you from? And he said, Zimbabwe, originally. And I said, oh, I just got back from Nigeria. I spoke at Madonna University on the biology of belief and the molecules of emotion. And he said, wow, he said, are you, you're one of those motivational speakers. And I said, yes. And I said, and I said, you can, you know, come if you're in town to the Camelot Theater. And I'm there, you know, every Sunday. And I gave him the each one reach one card and got into this amazing conversation. And he had a lot of light. And I thought to myself, energetically, that we are always attracting our soul community. No matter where we are in the world, no matter where we are, in downtown Palm Springs or wherever, that we are always attracting our soul community. Our Alice was in Starbucks and a young man saw her. He's my age, he's a young man. And uh, <laughs> he thought she had so much light that he went over and said, may I sit with you? And he's been coming ever since. I just love the way it works. That when we put it out there and it's about the light, do not hide your light under a bushel. This is what Jesus said. Because if we hide our light under a bushel, that energy is forgotten. And we're not accessing the power and the presence and the energy of who and what we are. Each and every one of us has Aladdin's lamp. We consciously allow ourselves to polish it. Allow it to come forth. Allow the voice of the universe to say, your wish is my command and to put forth what it is that we want to experience this next year, the year of our Lord, 2012. To expand our lives, to deepen the quality of our relationships, to acknowledge that I accept my good and my unexpected good. I say that every single day. I accept my good and my unexpected good. I sleep in peace, I wake in joy, and I live in the ever-present moment of now. I say that every single night and when I awaken in the morning, that is my first thought. I sleep in peace, I wake in joy, and I live in the ever-present moment of now. Today I want you to know, the past is gone, isn't it? It's gone. 2011 has passed. We're in the eternal moment to live, to express, to laugh, and to be ultimately who we are. So on this day, Let's polish the lamp from within. Let our light so shine before men and women that they see who we are and they glorify something greater in the universe by means of each and every one of us. I bless you. I acknowledge you for being here on this New Year's Day. I know it was, you know, for some of you who are, you know, partying, I know it was a challenge, but you made it. You did it. I acknowledge you. And I love you, and I say, in the year of our Lord, 2012, guess what? We are going higher yet. Where are we going? Higher, higher yet. yet. Where? Higher, higher yet. yet. And so it is. God bless you.